what's up what's up guys welcome to the channel we're gonna be going over our bitcoin update we're gonna talk about what we were talking about yesterday we are also going to be going over you know the bigger time frame and then we'll zoom into the smaller time frame it's going to look at the bullish and the bearish case scenario we're going to take a look at yesterday's view and what today may bring so definitely stick around for the whole video you're not going to want to miss it uh we're going to go over all this and then we'll be getting into the live chat so i appreciate all you guys for stopping by uh don't forget to smash that like button if you don't know how scroll down before the video hit that thumbs up if you are on your mobile exit your chat and hit the thumbs up and if you are on youtube tv in the bottom left hand corner hit more options or more actions and then it will give you the option um let's take a look at what's going on um also for those of you guys that know i haven't been as active on twitter or my discord lately um because there's things going on in the family so uh, most of you guys know about that but anyway let's get into it all right so looking at the big picture which absolutely nothing has changed yet i'm still looking at this as a five waves down being an a wave as a possibility there is a possibility a more bearish possibility and also there's a possibility that five has ended here and we are on our way up for b remember i remain bearish and think we will most likely see um much lower prices by the end of the year or beginning of next year unless we cross this top green trend line and get support on it then we could be going to a new all-time high but unless that happens i remain bearish in the big picture uh, for the next year or so um but remember i do expect a rally up ending in august or september somewhere in that area um and returning back down so that's my view in a nutshell let's look at what's going on now so we are getting a red candle right now on the daily uh, we are getting support on the 0.236 fib here another break below this and to get resistance then we, we should come back down and test the 30,000 range again if that breaks i'm looking for these targets right here 26.5 if that breaks 23.4 and then our next fib level level is 182 so uh 18.2 so that's what i'm looking at let's look at the let's look at the volume volume still declining in a big way guys that's not a good sign uh let's take a look at the rsi so as of right now we are trying to pop back out of the rising wedge uh we did close back inside it yesterday so if we do get one more push up here we may get another little high uh which will create bearish divergence um most likely in the chart if that happens uh it's, it would have to come all the way up above 41.7 to not make hidden bearish divergence so uh, keep an eye on that Let's take a look at the Wickoff method. So a lot of people are talking about the Wickoff now. It's all over the internet. Um, there are people out there that have no idea what or how it really works. And people are following them, thinking they are some kind of god. Uh, be careful, guys, who you listen to. Um, as you guys know, I did call this one here all the way back on March 24th. If you don't believe it just go back find my video on march 24th we actually drew this blue line in here on this exact chart i have changed nothing on it uh we called the top would be probably around 63 or 64 and then a big reversal which is what we got now what a lot of people are talking about is that we are in accumulation here what they don't know is that volume is a big indicator if you're in accumulation or distribution and as of right now it is still pointing towards distribution. The scary part of for, well, it's not scary if you're a trader, it's actually just major opportunity, uh, which people think it's negative, but uh, if you wanna just hope the charts go one way that's on you, uh, they do move both ways and you can make money going in both directions. Uh, check out PrimeXBT, my favorite exchange. They don't trade against you. They are an A book, not a B book. Uh, definitely check them out, you can trade forex uh crypto gold silver oil s p dow jones all on one exchange you can have multiple trades in they don't clump them together like the scammy exchanges um so definitely check it out if you haven't and you can use my promo code savvy 50 that'll get you 50 percent on top of whatever you deposit as a bonus and savvy 25 will get you 25 percent off your fees uh, there is a tutorial here on my youtube page if you go to my home page on youtube uh, there's prime xpt tutorial it teaches you how to use the leverage or margin um also how to put in your promo codes and all that it's all in this video definitely check it out there's also a buy bit one down here 
Um, not my preferred exchange, but a lot of people do prefer them. If you want to use them, I do have a tutorial and a bonus if you use my links down below. So definitely check those out. There's also some free tutorials here, guys, that have a lot of good info if you are just beginning. Um, but back over to this wick off. Let's take a look. We're going to pull up. So this is the wick off logic right here. This is the big top, which I believe was the 63,000, 64,000 range. We have the big markdown, and then we have another redistribution, and then another big markdown before the real accumulation. Um, and as you guys know, I've told you over and over that the wick off should be looked at on the daily, nothing lower than the daily. Um, and as of right now, this does seem to be playing out beautifully. Uh, we'll see what happens, but let's take a look at, we're going to pull up accumulation. And remember, um, if you're going to use wick off, definitely learn the signs and I'm not, I don't have time to go through it on these videos. Um, a lot of people will most likely get bored and not understand it. But if you're using wick off, definitely, definitely, definitely try to understand that wick off volume is 80% of it. All the rest is just lines. If you're just going by lines, chances are you're reading it way incorrectly. So this is the distribution and it does look like we are just doing the same thing all over again um, as, as we did right up here. This looks like a mini version of that. That's distribution. And after distribution, we would look at that as redistribution. Um, that is still where I believe we are. Not saying it's a guarantee. Um, anything can happen. Obviously, nobody knows for sure what's going to go on in the markets. And if you believe that anybody does, you and them are insane. So anyways, uh, and this is the accumulation. Again, read up on how your volume works. This volume here is a bigger sign of distribution, the way it is running than it is of accumulation. But if it was to be accumulation, we could expect something like this, uh, sideways actions for another month or two uh, before going up, if that's the case. Let's take a look at the next chart we got up here. All right, so also guys, don't forget to check out my wife's webpage, anchormage.com, a lot of cool stuff on there, quality stuff, and a lot of people have been loving these mouse pads. They are the Divergence Cheat Sheet. Divergence is one of the hardest things to learn, and sorry if you guys couldn't hear me, my mic was a little far off. So anyways, um, yeah, check it out, links down below. A lot of other good affiliate links down there too that help the channel out and give you some kind of bonus or discount with all of them, so check them out. There's also a, <coughs> excuse me, there's also a uh, VPN down there. If you're not using a VPN and you're on the internet, even if you're not trading, I suggest using a VPN. It just helps you, um, just another security away from hackers that hide your IP address from others. So definitely something you might want to check out. The link's down below. Anyways, so this is the bullish view, which we'll take a look at in a second. This is the bearish view. This is my chart from yesterday. Boris, thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, guys. Don't forget to scroll down and hit smash that likes button. I do appreciate it. It helps YouTube spread the video. Uh, don't be selfish. So anyways, uh, looking at this as a possibility, there, there's another possibility. If we do get another leg up, let's zoom in here. Uh, we are making in the four hours some hidden bullish divergence, but this can be erased if we break this 55 EMM. EMA, which is around 40 or 34,350. 34,350. Remember that number. Let's go back over here. Oh, check it out. That's also the 0.5 fib, which we are trying to maintain support on now. If that's to break and become resistance, guys, we are going down to these levels at least. Um, we've talked about this for months. I've had these charts drawn for months. Nothing, absolutely nothing has changed. I have not changed my charts on a daily basis. Uh, but like I said, could be, you know, some hit, hidden bullish divergence here. We are in an uptrend. That would be a continuation of the uptrend. And remember yesterday, I said there is a possibility we get all the way up to this 38.6 range. Uh, we did have this. I did short here. I do have my shorts in profit right now. Um, so even if I get stopped out, I'm going to be in profit. And I'll tell you, I told everybody where my entry was. My entry was at... And I didn't announce you guys, as you guys know, I have a lot of stuff going on, but I did show in the Discord today, 
by the way, if you've been trying to get in the Discord and it hasn't been working for you, the link below, I have renewed it. Um, so the link should be good if you do want to join the Discord. It's totally free. Um, we don't charge. A lot of good people in there. But anyway, my entry price was at $36,250. And right now I have my stops at $35,550. By saying that, maybe some smart ass with a lot of money might stop me out. But that's all right because I'm in profit. So anyways, if we do end up breaking back up here and breaking this 200 EMA, the next stop I see is around this 38.6. We talked about that yesterday. Otherwise, if we cannot break this high, uh, the 36.7 area that we talked about yesterday, if we can't break that high, then most likely we are coming back down here. If we want to take another look at this, let me zoom in a little bit and talk about if we put a trend line right across the bottom here could we be looking at a head and shoulders which is definitely a possibility we could be seeing something like this left shoulder head right shoulder and if we come back down and break this trend line over here what would the measured move be we would take a measured move from the top of the head to the neckline and if we were to break down over here, some area uh, within the next uh, 24 hours, uh, that would get us right around 32.1. So that would be the next target if we're looking at this as a head and shoulders. Guys, it all depends on what time frame you're, you're looking at. Um, if you are trading, that's why I suggest never take trades. Anybody on YouTube is talking about, myself included, all your decisions are up to you. You have nobody to blame or even if you win, it's not because of somebody else. It's because you made the decision. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, Thiago, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Sabri, you remind me so much of my father that passed away two years ago. Watching you is like hearing his advice. Thank you for that. I'm learning a lot with you. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for the super chat, and thank you for your support. Greatly appreciated. And let's look at this big picture here. So, like I said, there is room for one more leg up here, but let's put another trend line down in here on the RSI. This does look like a rising, broadening wedge. Um, could get another tap up to the top, which, like I said, would create, if we did get up to this area, we would still be making more bearish divergence, actually hidden bearish divergence in a bigger downtrend. Um, so keep that in mind. But again, let's see if we even break this 55 EMA here first. But we've talked about this being a possible wave five down. Now, that's the worst case scenario for the position we're in now. This could also end up, even if we don't go up higher, could also be just another A and a B and a C instead of a one, two, three. And what would that target be? We'll take a look at that now. That would be going from the swing high with your fib extension, which the swing high is here. Looking at that as an A, all the way bottom, right here, the bottom of this wave being B. And then if it's done here, see our one-to-one -one extension would be down here. And I'll put a target there so you guys know. Um, and if you're not following along, join the Discord. A lot of people in there understand a little bit more about Elliott Wave. Um, so anyways, that would get us a target if this was an ABC of around 24.2 and then possibly another move up. We'll we'll talk about it as it happens because a lot of this, it doesn't necessarily mean when it gets there. It's how it gets to certain points that you know if it's, you know, you got to watch for divergence and, and a lot of other things. But one thing I want to point out on this four hour, guys, we have we're having this big push up here. And if you look at the volume. The whole time it's been going up, the volume has been going down. Usually not a very good sign in the long run. Um, and here's the bullish case. So we talked about this yesterday also. Uh, Raiv, I hope I said your name right. Big fan of you, brother. I have 2K to invest in Bitcoin for long term. What are your thoughts and best possible entry that I can stay peaceful? That is totally up to you. Um, it all depends on the 200 EMA if we do pass that. For wave four and then wave five being up around 44 one um just another possibility for you bulls out there but as of right now like i said i told you what i'm doing i am leaning more towards this count and either being a abc which would look like this 
This would be an A, this would be a B, or B right here, and then our C would be around the 24-2. Uh, that's my other scenario for here. If we break that 24-2, then most likely this is three wave. And let's put some lines down here so we know where that three wave target would be. It would be right here, the uh, 1.618. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this here so you know what I'm talking about. And then most likely a bounce back up to this 26.3 region and back down. Again, if we get a nice bounce here, if we have topped out here, um, and we get a bounce here around that 24.2, which is, you know, lining up with some of our other targets in the bigger picture, which is right here. Uh, these are the bigger EMAs. And as you guys know, I looked at this as a fifth wave ending diagonal, and this being an A, expecting a B at some point, but I don't believe A is ended yet. Um, again it possibly could nobody knows for sure but as of how i'm looking at it now it doesn't seem that wave five has ended there wasn't five waves in wave five for one um so yeah what's one of the other things i was looking at the other day well if you look at this rising channel the measure moved down from there would be about 33 32 3 and again like i said these targets it depends on how you're trading what time frames you're trading a lot of people expect just a straight line up or a straight line down. That is not how markets work. Never have, never will, um, unless you get you know a freak crash or whatever. We're also gonna look at the DXY. I haven't looked at that today. Uh, I'm gonna look at gold, silver. Um, some people were talking about XRP. We'll take a look at that because I have that chart. Litecoin and Ethereum. We're gonna take a look at all that and then I'll get it in the chat and discuss it with you guys. Don't forget to smash those likes if you're in here. It's like 1,200 people and only 473 likes. Guys, all you have to do is go down under the video and smash that like button. I do appreciate it. It does help the YouTube algorithm push the video out more. Make sure you tick your notifications bell. A lot of people said they're not getting notified when I post videos. All you have to do is make sure you go into your YouTube app or whatever and not just hit the notification bell on my video, but go in the app and turn your notifications on. That way you will be notified um let's go back over to here so one more thing i want to look at let's go into the bigger time frames first off yeah let's go into the bigger time frames here uh let's go into the weekly see how the weekly is looking so on the weekly a lot of people are talking about this also we do have some hidden bullish divergence here uh has it already played out with this move here definitely a possibility this weekly candle here does look pretty bullish, but it, again, it wasn't at the bottom of the trend, so I'm not uh, counting that as a very bullish candle. It's just not at the bottom of the trend, so um, I guess you could consider it there, but uh, yeah, I don't... If, if the end of the candle would have been under here, if this would have been the top of that body down here, then I may consider it more bullish, but as of right now, I do not. Let's look at the monthly candle. Monthly candle closes today. Will that show, is there divergence in the monthly? No, there is not. We do have higher lows in the RSI and higher lows here um, in the price action. Let's go into the six month. Uh, that also, does that end today? It does, or tomorrow. We have another day or so. I don't even know what day it is, but it's almost time for the monthly to close. So let's look at the six month. That, my friends, is one of the ugliest candles um, ever. Just look at it. That's that's not pretty. Unless it gets a huge rally today, uh, that's gonna that's an ugly looking candle for the six month. It doesn't say we can't come back up, you know, a little bit higher uh, right right when we close this monthly. But all in all, that's a very bearish candle. It looks the same on the yearly. Uh, nothing pretty about it at all. That is the biggest wick. In Bitcoin's history, that is huge, huge sell off. Big money selling into dumb money. That's exactly what that was. Don't believe it any different. Um, let's go back into the four hour over here. Okay, so let's go into the bigger charts. As you guys know, this is my dollar. We will take a look at the DXY. This is my dollar index overlaid on the Bitcoin chart. Every time the dollar bottoms on this trend line, Bitcoin tops. Every time the dollar tops on this trend line, 
Bitcoin bottoms, vice versa, keeps going. Uh, dollar top, Bitcoin bottom. Dollar bottom, Bitcoin top. Pay attention to this stuff, guys. Um, I know there's ex a lot of bearish stuff or bullish stuff out there. I'm not by any means saying anybody's wrong because nobody knows, but I'm seeing a lot more bearish signs than I am bullish uh, for the longer term, longer medium term, depends on how you're looking at the market. We talked about this yesterday. Let me get out of here real quick. We talked about this yesterday, guys. These are the FIB channels from the tops and the bottoms here. Uh, this channel right here, the 0 0.382 FIB, we cannot seem to get above it. We talked about it yesterday. We are we did get rejected again. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. Right here, we got another rejection. Unless we start, and this is in the three-day. Unless we open and close a three-day above this trend line, it is bearish. This is heavy, heavy, heavy resistance. Um, putting it out there. What if we are in a 10-year cycle and this is just a big, huge distribution area for the next few years? Not saying it's a guarantee, not saying it's it's going to happen. Just a, You got to take a look at all perspectives if you're going to play in the markets, guys. Could the four-year cycle be ended? Most definitely. Uh, could a new cycle, since Bitcoin's older now, could it be a 10-year cycle? It is a possibility. Something to think about. Like I said, um, I'm not telling you that's what's happening. I'm telling you, giving you ideas to think about. You need to look at all ideas in these markets. Um, as you guys know, this higher highs in the RSI here, lower highs in the price action, that is hidden bearish divergence. Um, my target remains the same for Litecoin around the $84 range first. If that breaks, looking towards a $50 range, all depending on what Bitcoin does. Um, Ethereum, targets haven't changed. Still looking for the $1,000 to $1,300 area. Um, same thing. We had higher highs in the RSI, lower highs in the price action. Even if we get that bump back up a little bit higher, we're still going to have hidden bearish divergence. Um, so these are still going to remain my targets. Uh, not going to go over this one. We've talked about it plenty of times. Uh, has the markets? Yeah, the markets are open right now. Let's check out the Dow. So the Dow is getting a little fake pump right now. Um, as you guys know, we're going to zoom out to the weekly, and I'm just going to show you my big picture on the Dow. I do believe that these markets have topped possibly get one more little push up maybe but if we look here in the big picture this is weekly this is 2018 january back here uh to this was our top may 10th uh 2021 you can see higher highs in the price action lower highs in the rsi that is bearish divergence same here if we zoom in a little more this is the beginning of 2020 this is may of 2022 or 21 higher highs lower highs in the rsi bearish divergence could we be getting another little push up here like i said it's definitely possible um we'll see what happens dxy still bullish uh, i still have that target of 93.50 up here that will erase this bearish divergence um yeah guys i we'll see what happens but uh, i'm bullish on the dollar for next year i showed you in the chart so my gold target, as of right now, is still 1677. It's been here since we printed this little bear flag. Um, I'm still looking at 1677 as a target there. Uh, silver, still looking around the $21 range. Uh, could go much lower than that, depending on what happens. Okay, let's go over well, look our XRP. XRP is still below the 21 EMA, unless it's able to break above the 74 cents. Actually, the 200 EMA. 78.50. Uh, let's say 79 cents. If it can break above that and get support, then maybe I will get bullish on it. But this just looks like a rising wedge here, which is a continuation to the downside. Um, I see very bad stuff coming for XRP. Let's look at here. We're making, and this is the daily. So in the daily, we made slightly higher highs here and big time lower highs here. That is hidden bearish divergence. All right, let's go over to, let's put these all in the daily, Look, starting with silver. We're going to go back. I want to show you guys something, especially you new people that haven't seen this, and then we will get into the live chat and see what you guys are up to. So let me get these all set up, and we can pop back and forth, and I can show you what I'm looking at. Um, everybody is super bearish on the dollar because the dollar is inflation and blah, blah, blah. Uh, when there's fear in something, buy the fear. When there's greed in something, 
sell the greed. Uh, it's that simple. Let's look at the DXY. And we're, we're going to take a look at the last decent sized market crash, which was in 2008. Um, hopefully you guys find this interesting and it makes sense to you. If not, um, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. If you can't agree to disagree, um, that's when you get yourself in trouble. So anyways, let's take a look. This is Dow Jones. <clears throat> 2008 crash. That was a 55% dump in the Dow over that year. 2008, right? Let's take a look at gold in 2008. Boom. Gold took a 35% crash. So everybody says, hedge, the, hedge your hedge against the dollar. They were saying it back then too. And gold and silver and now Bitcoin. Um, but when the Dow crashes and everything else crashes with it, Look at what gold did. Look at what silver did. Silver made a 61% drop um, in 2008. Gold, 35% drop. 2008, the Dow, 60% or 55% drop. The dollar, boom, 30% raise in that same exact time period, guys. Uh, just so you guys know that, do what you will with that information. Um, that is my opinion and my view. I don't have to be right, but I do want you guys to take a look at it. Let me know what you think, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to get into the chat here. See what you guys are thinking. Joseph said it will hit 25. Never speak in absolutes. That's bad psychology. Mr. B looks more like a descending triangle than a falling wedge to me. I'm not an expert, though. 1,400 people and only 675 likes. You guys disappoint me, man. Thanks, Chris V. Appreciate it. Please don't spam the chat up. Shane Bondi, always realistic. Interpretation buddy, realistic, not negative. Do you use Fibonacci to move stops? Yeah, I use Fibonacci along with... Um, that's another thing. Let's zoom in here. Um, I didn't talk about that. Let's zoom in here, and if this was to get a bounce here, uh, we're going to take a look at where that bounce might be. We're zoomed into the four hour here. So if we we're going to continue this bounce off here, off this 55, let's put a Fibonacci retracement on there. And these would be the levels to look for, unless we break this low here. Uh, the golden pocket zone is between 35.8 and 35.9, where I would expect a rejection here. Could go as high as 36.1 using the Fibonacci's. But if we break this low, then we have to, uh, you know, relook at this. So I told you guys where my stops were and stuff. If you didn't see it, go back to the beginning. Um, I did enter my trade at 36.250. Um, I, I put in a short yesterday. So, um, And this is the bullish case for you that just joined. Um, is that a possibility? It is a possibility. Which is more likely? Um Either this here being the start of three wave or the start of the C wave, which would end around 24. So that's what I'm looking at, guys. Um, do your own due diligence. Make up your own mind. Do not take trades off of anybody. And I mean anybody's Twitter. Twitter seems the worst because everybody is just out, just extremely bullish all the time. Um, YouTube. Same way, a lot of bullish, but there is some people that actually take an honest view at the markets on YouTube if you can find them. Um, but yeah, these this is what we're looking at, guys. This is where I'm at. So let me get back into the chat now, and we'll see what's going on. How much is manipulated? Bernie, DMD, again, my trading group, and I wish you to use these funds for your extended family's needs at this time of loss. Thank you, man. I do appreciate it. That is awesome. That's a lot of money. You did not have to do it. I do appreciate that. They will, too, because that side of the family is kind of um, hurting for money. I've donated some to them. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, and so do they. Never speak in absolutes. That's a t-shirt savvy. <laughs> that is a t-shirt. But remember, guys, anything you want, if you go down to my wife's webpage, inkyourimage.com, any saying, anything you want, you could even put I hate savvy. I don't care what you put, but 
um, tell her what you want on in the shirts or coffee mugs or whatever, and she can make that happen for you. They caught him. Yes, that is my wife here, guys, Laura Hudson, in the chat. So uh, she just notified me that they caught the guy. So that is freaking awesome. I don't know how much longer I'm going to stay on the stream now. I want to kind of figure out what's going on that. I will stick around for a couple more minutes, though. In Akron, Ohio, at a gas station. Sweet. That's awesome. That is great to hear. Um, I believe in karma, and I believe he'll get his. That $200 gift shows there's still good in this world. Yes, yeah, I know there's plenty of good in this world. There's a whole lot of bad, too. Thank God there are still good-hearted people. <clears throat> they caught the the guy that killed my nephew in a random shooting um, at a gas station. John Walters, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Big time. You guys rock. I will definitely get that to them, and they will be extremely happy. The world's narrative is certainly leaning towards a mass adoption with ISO coins. The really, uh, BTC is a 100% uh, speculation. The whole crypto market is still pure speculation. Right. Yeah, the they shot three people. I don't know if the other two people are still on life support or stable. Um, my nephew did pass away. Uh, none of the people involved knew each other, so it was just totally random insanity. <clears throat> so anyways, I think I need to... Um, I'm going to get a hold of my family, see what's going on with that, and let them know if they haven't found out already, which I'm sure they have, but I just want to see what's going on, so... Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for the funds to help the family out. I do appreciate that. And uh, have a great day. I will uh, probably not see you again until tomorrow, but I'll try to post as much as I can on Twitter and stuff when I have time. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it.